All right. Sorry for the delay, Fred. I was trying to find some uh, demo reels. Well, trying to find more than just one demo reel that we could use to showcase for today. Because today's topic is how to build your show reel. And I was hoping to have a couple of professional examples for you, but fewer casters than I thought have uh, either don't have current demo reels or don't have them easily accessible. But Uber did just release his not too long ago, so we'll take a look at that one. Speaking of Uber, I believe he is doing a review of his grand finals cast. I think that starts at 9 Eastern. So we'll throw it over to there once that begins. Don't really have any VOD reviews for you this week. I figured we could just talk demo reels. If y'all have any questions. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of tired this week, so we're not going to have a two-hour class today. But did you know we did have this topic come up in uh, the CGL chat as far as how to build your show reel. So I thought it might be a good topic for us to discuss. Um, getting into the meat of it, I, I think, well, two minutes and 20 seconds is about the total length. Like, that's as, as long as you need to make it. I feel like my volume's a little low there, according to my audio bar. Anyway, um, I've heard people say that you know they can tell they can tell a caster's style and what they're going to bring to the table in you know in the first thirty seconds of hearing them. So there's there's really no need to go any longer than that two minute twenty second mark. Also, that's the the max length of video you can put on Twitter, and it's always smart to have your all your business contact info and have your demo reel pinned to the top of your Twitter. So if anybody goes to check it out, they can immediately see what you're about, some of the projects you've worked on, what games you've worked on, and so forth. So I think the length is, is one of the most important aspects because that kind of dictates how much you can put into it. But past that, you want to show you want to show a variety of skills. You want to show yourself casting in in a variety of situations and a variety of moments within within a series. So it's it's good to you know have some intro, have some of you talking you know to the camera and doing a little bit of setup. It's good to showcase various stages of team fights. You know it's and we'll take a look at mine here in a little bit. And frankly, mine is not anywhere near where I want it to be. It's still in its preliminary stages, hence why it's not on my Twitter yet. I don't find it complete. So I'm not not ready to put it out there for the world to see. I'll let y'all take a look at it. No, it's not done. It's not done, Ocean. It's. I was just uh, toying around with some music and stuff lately, but otherwise there hasn't really been much changes probably since the last time you looked at it. I was actually waiting till after TOC, and then in that little bit of a break, I'm going to try to revamp it a little bit. But that, that's part of why I wanted to, to talk about this today, because, I mean, this, frankly, I think will help me kind of flush out the ideas of what I want to get in there. Because I think one of the problems with mine is I didn't, it doesn't show enough variety. I feel like it's just, I mean... It shows different stages, like it's not all just super hype moments, but it's kind of close to that. And so it doesn't, it doesn't show the range that I, I think I'm really capable of. But you also want to show different, different sides of yourself. You want to, you want to have some humor in there, if at all possible. Um, you know, show the high intensity moments, perhaps show some good analytics or just some good um understanding of the game that you're casting i guess is the best way to put it so that you know how you implement your big brain into a cast because there's a difference between you know watching a vod back and, and being able to take good notes and understand what's going on and then being able to implement that into a live broadcast so it Having different clips that show off these different skills and can give a, a tournament organizer or an employer uh, the chance to see the variety you bring, and it all it all helps to to point to who you are as a caster. That you know that it's not just being able to handle hype moments. 
um, or it's not just about having a big brain and a good understanding of the game. Like it's it's your personality is what you're really trying to sell, and and that's tough. That's what that's what makes being, making a, a show real or a demo real so difficult because you have to be able to recognize that within yourself and understand your own style before you can pick out clips of what you think is the best representation of that style. And, and that in of itself can be very daunting. Um, I, I know I struggle with going back and even just reviewing my own stuff because it's, I mean, all I see are the mistakes, right? <laughs> like, I, I feel like I just microscope onto everything I'm doing wrong or everything I don't like, which is, I mean, it's good. It's part of, it's part of what makes me learn and grow in, in whatever I'm doing. Um, it's, it's what my mother would call a natural problem-solving tendency, where it's I'm, I'm automatically drawn to the problems because my subconscious inclination is to fix the problems. Uh, but it can make reviewing yourself difficult, and I think we all have that to a certain aspect. And it, it can make showing off your, your best work even more difficult. Uh, and this is, I mean, as far as going back to VOD reviews, it's also why it's important to make sure and focus on positive. I know I've, I've hit on this point before, and I've harked on this point before. For, for those of you watching live, you, you've definitely heard me talk about make sure that you're, you're focusing on positives as well, and ne as, well as negatives when lo looking at your own stuff. Because otherwise, otherwise, you know, you may eliminate mistakes and raise your bar from the bottom to where it, you know, you're not, your lows don't dip as low, but you're not going to raise the highs. You're not going to make the highs even better and, and really push the top to, to excellence without being able to focus on what you're doing well and, and keeping that up and making sure you're interjecting that more and amplifying those things may you know make it even better uh so i mean it's it's tough it's tough uh it's something i'm still working on so <laughs> yeah by no by no means an expert in this just uh just trying to share what i've learned um so let's here we'll, we'll start with mine let's see let me get it pulled up here Get my get my screen all maximized and everything. I am putting all these on the YouTube, so if you're watching this at a later date, uh, I've actually noticed I'm getting a lot more views on these after the fact than than I thought, than I, than I definitely would have originally anticipated. So if you're watching this after the fact, feel free to go leave a comment on the YouTube. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I absolutely check those quite a bit. And in, in return, I'll try to get better at getting these up at a, a bit of a quicker pace. I try to go make, you know, fancy thumbnails and everything, and then I end up putting too much work on myself and procrastinating. But I, can, I need to get better at that. So we can help each other out. With that said, we can take a look at my unfinished show reel. Like it's a, I'm almost a little hesitant. Oh, it's fine, Ocean. I think, uh, I think I may do one with Polly as well. So I, I'm not quite sure yet. I didn't want. I know that he had kind of mentioned it, but we hadn't really discussed it so I didn't want to do it here today without talking to him first but needless to say don't don't feel obligated to submit something like it's I, I don't actually want to do reviews every week oh you're too kind NSB you're too kind I don't so it's okay if you don't <laughs> the idea is to try to figure out how we can make it better um but as I start to say yeah, don't feel obligated to submit stuff it's fine I don't I don't want this to necessarily just be VOD reviews every week. I think that can get stale and there's so many more aspects of casting and other ways to improve besides just VOD reviews. Although obviously VOD reviews are very good and I do want that to be a, a large chunk of, of what we do here. It's definitely important. And there's, there's so many different things we could be focusing on. Um, but don't feel obligated. 
actually I, I don't know if y'all if y'all enjoyed the 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 master like looking into the masters the master study but i want to do another one of those i thought that was really good uh, I, I learned a lot from doing that so ho hopefully that translated and y'all did as well uh, i was thinking about doing one on avril and pixie and talking about personality and how they're able to interject so much personality into their casts so that's that's kind of my idea for next week yeah y'all let me know what you think uh but that's kind of what i'm thinking anyway that's the future. Let's look at the present here. And the present being my uh, unfinished showreel. So we'll take a look here and then we'll discuss. We'll just watch it in its entirety and then we can go back and pick it apart. Hello, my friends, and welcome to day two of the NA Contenders Trials. My name is Bullskunk alongside Man of Class. We got a good matchup coming at you today. Kratos taking on Nocturnal. Full the embodiment of strength. And Kratos come out with another big victory. Nate and company working around the left-hand side while Kratos, they're going to hold inside on top of that little bridge for now as both teams just kind of sizing each other up. At Bob thrown on the point to initiate the fight here for Kratos. Mines go down in the very back, trying to isolate default from the rest of the team, but it doesn't seem to phase him one bit. Picks up one with the Bob, finds one with the Viper. Duper getting in the mix as well, and Kratos get the flip right back. Like Maxwell in a dangerous spot, he's caught in this tiny room with four members of Nocturnal, somehow able to escape. Oh, what a bait! Maxwell draws them all in, the entirety of Nocturnal runs into the small box, and then Crawley with the huge Gravitic Flux. What a beautiful play from Kratos. Oh, and Borkin's gonna be careful. Oh, down low with getting swarmed. He's gonna throw down that supercharger to try to bend off the onslaught. Guther dropping down to help out there. Arisa throws down the rally, throws down the mace to the face. Kratos pushing through Westworld. And rally used in that big old bank from Nocturnal. They're all bolstered up. It's gonna be very difficult to kill. Oh no, and now Kratos caught in this tiny world. Oh no! The flux into the blade is huge! Well, I'll be looking at Maxwell. Not work. This game has been doing that blade will be up in no time. I suspect they're going to say supercharger. Nope. They're going to use the supercharger to help Maxwell build up towards the rest of that blade. Finding only the Ash with the Gravitic Flux. Oh, and Maxwell goes in by two, by three off the blade. Kratos managed to hang on in this fight. A little bit of cleanup on the end, and Kratos for the skin of their team. Will take Matt three to two. It's gonna be all for us. Y'all look out for each other in game and out. We'll see you next time. Okay, so I mean it's okay. It, I, I definitely want to change it up. Uh, that's all the same series, and that's part of what. That's part of what I was going for on, on the the reel. Is it, it, it? I was trying to tell the story across the series, and it, it didn't quite work as well as I had hoped it would. And, and that's one of the things I'm going to change. Uh, I mean, it is from Contenders Trials, yes, but yeah, m more specifically, it is all from the same series. And hey, look at how much hair my hair has grown back. It, it, it was, it does come across a bit weird. I agree. I agree. And, and the idea was to tell the story across the match and, and try to show a little bit of build up and down. Um, but it, I don't think it conveys as well as I'd wanted it to, as well as it w went in my head. Like the idea in my head was to show this arc throughout one series and something that you could ideally follow, but it doesn't come across. Now, why why is the question um there i mean there are certain things like it, it's good to have an intro but i don't feel like oh, what a terrible freeze frame freeze frames always catch the worst expressions don't they um a couple i mean like one i've moved my mic placement since then and you can like you can actually hear my audio dip in one of the clips which just sucks it's like i enjoy the casting on it but the audio quality isn't good enough to to put into a show reel 
So, I mean, that's that's something to keep in mind right out of the gate. You can actually hear, like, the stream itself had a, a bit of a, an, a lag or something, and you can kind of hear my voice kind of cut. Welcome to day two of the NA Contenders trial. My name is Bullskunk alongside Man There, where it kind of does the robot thing. Like, that sucks. And I'm trying to just introduce myself, like, you kind of get, you know, you can see my face and my freshly shaved head, which I like it. I'm going to have to go back and reshave my head. Anyway. Um, but it doesn't have a whole lot of personality to it, right? Like, it's just, it's just like, hi, I'm Bull Skunk. Here I am. Yep. We're going to cast some trials. A and... I mean, on camera presence is something I'm, I'm working on in general. Uh, I mean, I don't, I feel like my posture and stuff is, is usually pretty good as far as, as showing intent, showing it's something I'm enthused about, but you know, need to loosen up. That's something I've been working on. That's, that was actually a, a note I got from Boop on TOC. Like he came in like at halftime and was like, you've got to loosen up on camera. And, and, and I felt like I did after that, but that needs to show it in the demo reel. It needs to have more personality. So, like, right out of the gate, I'm not happy with it. Uh, as we continue through. Also, his camera's glitching out. Which I initially didn't mind thinking, well, the focus is supposed to be on me anyway. I'm the one talking. But it is distracting. And... You know, you would like for everything on the screen to be nice and clean, no audio clips, no no lag, no pixelization. You want everything to be super clean, because I mean, this is this is putting your best foot forward, right? So, let's see. Uh, my yours is your mic placement, Ocean. I can tell you right now. Yours is your mic placement. <laughs> hey, I have a <laughs> my left eye. How is one eye burning through your soul more than the other? <laughs> my left eye is burning into somebody's soul. That's an interesting comment, Ocean. <laughs> uh, but no, that's I've actually had. Uh, that, that was another feedback. Is, is remember to blink. <laughs> like boop is like. How did you stare at the camera that long without blinking? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and it wasn't from this cast, but D damn it. See now, now <laughs> my left eye is staring into your soul. Uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, that's, that's kind of the, the death stare has always been a uh, feedback that I've gotten. I'm looking at it. I've, you know how many hours I've spent looking at this? It took me forever to put this together. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You're actually making my eyes water. Actually, that's too funny. <laughs> Look at the freeze frame. I'm actually kind of glancing down right there. Like, I'll look. Unknocked. There you go. See, I looked back up. Oh, now there you go. Now that's a. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Um, making sure to stay relaxed. My eyes move properly. Both my eyes move properly. Thank you very much. I stand by that. <laughs> uh, what's up, Wolf? But yes, the, the death stare is feedback that I've gotten before. I know, I know you're teasing. Anyway, anyway, I got distracted from from Ocean's comments. Uh, but doesn't show enough enough personality. I mean, it's just kind of meh. <laughs> Caster class number seven: How to move your eyeballs? Yes, it has to be. Yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I shouldn't just do this. Let's do this. I'm just going to cast like this from now on. Just right up in your face. All right. Um, uh, as I was starting to say, though, Ocean, your mic placement. This is... So the screen I'm looking at sits here. And in the my old setup, the mic was on this side of me and would sit about here, right? You can see it in the frame, right? It's sitting about right there. 
which you know i thought was like nice and in front of my face but even this to when i would turn and look at my screen which is here yeah you can see my finger on camera maybe which is there then it was just enough for the audio to cut out because my mic would be sitting here and just that from going straight forward to here would be enough for my audio to dip. And so that's one of the reasons I put it here. And not only do I like it hanging because I'm less likely to bump it when I'm gesturing, which I do a lot of, even if the camera's not on me. But when I'm looking at my screen, the mic is dead in front of me. And it's it's centered enough to when I'm talking to camera that my audio doesn't dip out anymore. So mic placement is super important for maintaining consistency in your audio levels. Yeah, but don't worry about it. Yeah, I mean, I, let's try it on podcasts. Podcasts, <laughs> crack weasel eyeballs. <laughs> Bring it back the OG nickname. Hey, don't, don't, don't tell, don't tell all, all, all of my new friends my old school nicknames. They're gonna start calling me crack weasel too. Uh, no, it's fine. You can't. It's, I've been called crack weasel for many years now. Uh, what's up, Airborne? Thanks for joining. Uh, but yes, let's try that on podcast. Uh, because yeah, it's a good place for us to test things like that, but it's something for uh, everybody to keep in mind. Your mic placement is super important. So, and there are spots in this, in this video where my audio dips out and that's why, uh, even the, the last, I, I loved the call I made and the next to final shot where it was setting up maxwell's genji blade and then he pulls the blade and just like slaughters half the team with it and that won them the map won them map five and won them the series like that's that's what the final string of clips is trying to convey and a it's just it, it's a, i think a bit off a little bit more and i could chew i just don't think it comes across in a short amount of time but more importantly my mic my audio dips through that and so it detracts from the quality of the whole thing no honestly variety is probably better it really it just needs to show your personality that's that's what's really important so my my experiment of trying to put together a cohesive story Co cohesive did i just say cohesive cohesive story <laughs> throughout my show reel i think it was kind of a, a bit of a failed experiment uh yeah you want to show it's not so much about <laughs> it's not so much about showing the story of uh you know one team versus another it's more showing how you tell the story so i think it, it is important to show those different to show the early it is different skill sets but i think it's still important to show how you handle early in the fights or early in the series um even set up and introductions like i like the bit where you know i'm talking about you know where will kratos the embodiment of strength because that's what kratos means right you know come out and and claim victory like that kind of stuff i think it's cool to show it's you know when the gates are opening and you're you're setting up the match. You're you're building the hype for what's about to happen. Like that's cool. Uh, early in fights, you know, we'll talk about you know through caster class that your hype level on map one should not be the same as your hype level on map three. Not to mention map five. I mean, depending on if it's a sweep or you know if it's a tiebreaker and you're going to map five, the hype you should still have room to go even yet. Um, to where you don't hit your your absolute peak of excitement in every single series where you do like you just don't not every series is going to be deserving of your max level of excitement uh the, the ones that are super close map five tie breakers you know playoffs you know elimination on the line like there's you should have something in the tank and something in your style that allows for you to go that extra bit up for the really hype moments that truly deserve it and your show reel should should demonstrate this. Your show reel should show various states of not only in the team fight, but where it is in the series itself. All right, so let's keep picking this apart. Eternal, full, the embodiment of strength, and Kratos come out with another big victory. 
Nate and company working around to the left hand side while Kratos, they're gonna hold inside on top of that little bridge for now as both teams just kind of sizing. Yeah, I mean, this I don't mind. Um, I, I think I do a fairly good job as far as my cadence and pauses of, of setting up early fights and, and just kind of establishing the groundwork and. You know, it can build a little tension, you know, with with some dramatic pauses. Like, they're just staging right now. You know, things are about to happen. But right now, they're the two prize fighters are just staring at each other across the ring. Um, so that's what I was going for here. I don't know if it was the best example of it as far as the clip. Second clip. Let's go down in the very back, trying to isolate default from the rest of the team. But it doesn't seem to phase him one bit. Picks up one with the bomb, finds one with the viper. I thought this was a good clip because it it showed intention behind what the team was trying to do and then how and why it failed, which I'm hoping conveyed the importance of default's play in this in this instance, in this particular engagement, th that he was able to overcome the mines and have a big impact on the fight and take out find two early picks, which led to them recapping the point. Now, how successful it was, eh, I'm a little on the fence about. Like Maxwell, a dangerous fight. He's caught in this tiny room with four members of Nocturnal, somehow able to. So, with this, my intention was. This is part of the showing how your understanding of the game comes to play in the match itself and, and on the broadcast. And so I liked the way this depict depicted. Yeah, whatever, whatever. You know what I'm going for. <laughs> How this showed um, what they were trying to do in the overall plan. So what happened here is the Genji Maxwell is super low, goes into center box, and four members from Nocturnal chase him into that room trying to confirm that kill. Maxwell is a big time DPS player. He's a high impact player. Uh, and that's, you know, you can get one of your carries out. You, obviously, you're going to have a, a better time, right? It's like, you know, Overwatch 101. Good focus, fire, recognize your win condition. Well, Maxwell flipped this on its head, baited them all into this tiny room, and then dashes out just as his Sigma throws the flux in on Nocturnal when they're all grouped up. Beautiful play. Like, straight just baited him in and then fluxed him and destroyed him. It was a beautiful play. So, what I was hoping was my understanding of what was really going on and all of those things overlapping came through in the broadcast and uh, illustrated to the viewers that they were trying to make that play. Again, I'm not sure how successful it was, but that was the intention behind this clip. Now let's take a look. Oh, what a bait! Back to a plausible end. The entirety of runs into the small box and then Crawley with the huge gravitic flux. What a beautiful play from Kratos. Oh, and Borkin's gonna be careful. On down low. This is my least favorite clip of the bunch. Try to fit off the onslaught. Goose are dropping down to help out there. Arisa throws down the rally, throws down the mace to the base. Kratos pushing through Westworld. And rally. I think I was trying to show a little bit of personality on that one, and it just, it, it's not the best example. It's kind of a flat clip. Uh, I believe my attention was also trying to bridge this one, which is a pretty height moment, to the previous clip, which was. I mean, you know, it was Mac 2, and it wasn't, it wasn't like super hype. It was a really cool play, but it, you know, I'm trying to show the steps of of emotion elevating, and it, it just wasn't successful. Uh, I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of it. Uh, that's definitely one of the clips that will get dropped out of this reel. Here, before we continue, let me go back and. Da, 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 da. Being able to show, eh, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how important that is. I mean, I think just being able to demonstrate an understanding of the game as a whole is really important. But, see, that that's the kind of detail that can get you in trouble when making a showreel. Don't get too detailed. Don't, because a lot of, 
No, I, I understand what you're saying, Ocean. Like, you want to, you think it's important to be able to demonstrate that you understand a variety of compositions. But trying to show that in a reel, it may not come across. Like, I'm not sure. I mean, it's going to have to be like really clear cut examples. And, I mean, it could work. I'm not saying it couldn't work. I'm just saying don't get too lost in the details of it. It's it's about showing your personality. And you don't want to detract from a clip that could better off show your personality. And, and I mean, your understanding of the game and all that is part of it, for sure. But I, I that's something that could be difficult to read. Because most of the time, a, a TO or an employer is just going to look at these things once and move on. It's it's not something they're probably going to analyze very much. They're going to look at it, and it's it's more done by feel. Um, I mean, it's not a bad idea. Just be careful. Don't, don't get so technical with it that the attention isn't your personality. You're trying to show off you as a whole, not just your understanding yes yes you gotta remember it's, you're showing yourself off ocean saying i guess with reels is the point is that it's quick yes and like i was saying at the start a lot of exactly employers aren't going to analyze it yes they're going to may not even watch the whole thing i mean that's I very specifically remember, I mean, it may have been, may have been Necra who was talking about like, yeah, a really 140 seconds, Billy, is max. Uh, But it was Necra talking about that. She knows what that caster is about in 30. Yes. Like, and that, see, and that to me sounds very reasonable. That sounds like what TOs are going to do. If TOs have, I mean, shoot, 20, 30, 50 demo reels that they have to go through to pick eight to to be a part of their tournament, I seriously doubt they're going to watch all 30 to 50 in their entirety. Much less take the time to analyze, which is why I'm not happy with mine, which is why I think my experiment on my show reel is unsuccessful. It's unnecessary. And I think there are probably better clips that I could have brought in from, you know, multiple casts. And I say I say two minutes and 20 because that's, again, the Twitter. It, it, it Believe it or not, I mean, the, the Twitter is super important in the esports world. And being able to post your demo reel onto your Twitter, have it pinned at the top, I think is huge. I mean, it just gives somebody a very easy, clear example of what you're about right out of the gate. You've got your contact information. You've got examples of you casting. You know, you may have a picture of yourself up there or whatever it may be, but it's a great way and a very easy way for TOs to learn who you are at a glimpse. Yeah, that one can be tough too. It's was like, um, no, you're... Ocean's talking about casting a wide net, essentially, to to where your reel can can fit in a variety of different tournament formats, and that is important. And I, I think that's a point of contention as well. Um, we looked at Spacey's reel uh, a few episodes back, and there was like a, a great reel, but he had one like interjection of him casting a war zone in an effort to illustrate showing a couple of different games. And to me, it, I didn't like it personally, but I mean, Hey, that doesn't mean somebody else wouldn't. Uh, I mean, he's, he's trying to show, you know, casting a variety of games and, 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 and casting that wide net. Yeah. Interesting pun there, but yes. Um, I worry it creates a little bit of a disjointed feel. So just be careful trying to build your reel in an effort to tick a lot of different boxes as far as being uh, 
you know, it's, uh, I'm not really quite sure how to phrase it because you want to make it appealing to a wide variety of audiences and, a, and a d- different kinds of TOs in their tournaments, for sure. You want it to have wide appeal, but again, I don't think the details are necessarily as important in that. I think, I mean, I would be inclined to, if you're going to cast Call of Duty, to make a Call of Duty real. If you're going to cast Overwatch, you make an Overwatch real. If you're going to cast Rocket League, you have a separate reel for that. And and maybe there is one overall that shows all three. But that's also, I mean, coming from an animation background, that was that was kind of how it was done there. Where if you're doing character animation, that's one reel. If you're doing action animation, that's typically another reel. Especially if it's the difference between doing cinematic stuff and game uh, animations for games. Because animation for games is a lot more physically oriented, a lot more action animation oriented. Uh, If you're doing layout and camera work, that's a separate reel. So I think that's part of where my mentality comes from on that. And there's, there's no right or wrong in this, right? I mean, there's no absolute answer. Yeah, I think really the only absolute would be that two minute and 20 second length. You don't want to go past that. Yes. Uh, certain TOs, sure, are going to put more effort into analyzing the show reels and who they want to bring on. I really do think a vast majority would just do a 30 to 60 second glance on it. And make a decision from there. Kenobi's reel has Overwatch and some Valorant, but whichever title it is, you knew it was Kenobi. That's huge. Do you have a link to his reel? Is it on his Twitter? Let's go check it out. Well, here, well, let me, let's get through this first, and then we'll go look at that. Because I would like to have a couple examples. Uh, but let, let's finish this one out. And- I thought this clip had some some good personality to it, uh, plus hype. It's why I chose this clip. I think my audio dips at the end of this one too, though. That big old bank from Nocturnal. They're all bolstered up. It's gonna be very difficult to kill. Oh no! And now Kratos caught in this tiny room. Oh no! The flux into the blade is good. So the audio dips right there. It's unfortunate because I, I, I do like the casting on that. Um, it, it showed some joy. Uh, I mean, don't be, a, don't be afraid to, to show a little goofiness and show some joy, show some humor. I think it's obvious from there that I'm enjoying what I'm doing. And that's why I liked that clip. Um, but again, the audio quality dips out. So it's, it's tough cause I probably shouldn't include it. it. The audio needs to say crisp and clear throughout the entirety of the show reel. Oh, I, what is that? Aqua hates me. Uh, a Coors. Uh, oh, no. Uh, AQRs hates me. I'm not sure. I apologize. But I appreciate the host any way you slice it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Look at Maxwell. Not work. This game has been doing that blade will be up in no time. I suspect they're going to say supercharger. Nope. They're going to use the supercharger to help Maxwell build up towards the rest of that blade. Finding only the Ash with the Gravitic Flux. Oh, and Maxwell goes in by two, by three off the blade. Kratos managed to hang on in this fight. A little bit of cleanup on the end, and Kratos, by the skin of their team, will take this mat three to two. Okay. So, once again, the audio dipping. Um, uh, now, every time I go back, that's all I hear. There was some good stuff in there, but, yeah. Not a biggest fan. Uh, I was you know, trying to show a little bit of the understanding of the setup. You know, thinking they may save Supercharger. Obviously, Super Blade was very popular during this meta. Uh, instead, they dropped the Supercharger right after I called it, which I thought was a pretty cool... Like, that just worked out beautifully. I was like, I'm anticipating they're going to save Supercharger to get that Blade online, and then, boom, Bongos come down. And I immediately go, nope. Instead, they're going to use the Supercharger to help him build the rest of that Blade. 
All right, so showed what, you know, could be anticipating and then why they chose to do something different. And then, you know, you cut to a few seconds later when the blade actually comes out. And there's a cut there, but genuinely it was like three seconds later. Um, you know, blade comes out. He chops through a few. It's great. The hype is pretty good on it. The calls are pretty good on it. And then I tried to show the end in an effort to illustrate how impactful that was because it was like final fight. But that didn't work. That's where this falls apart for me is I don't need the end. Um, I mean, it's an OK call, but I don't think it really adds anything. And, and that's super important to building a show reel. Poppin, you all right? My dog about fell out of the chair. You're right there. I know, you were trying to nest and got too excited. Anyway. Um, you want to make sure all of your clips are building significantly, really, to, to the overall show reel, or really adding something to demonstrate your personality, your style, and your talent. They're, in 2 minutes and 20 seconds, you don't have enough time for filler. And you don't have enough time to have any clips in there that aren't building you up as as a caster. So this this falls flat for me there. And once I rebuild this, that this this end certainly will not be in it. Because if the stakes of it being final fight were that important, that should be in the casting part of it. And that should be illustrated uh in different ways there should be a clip just say it you know final fight super important maybe i even include my co-caster in there if that gets set up that way and one thing that it this doesn't really show her any transitions or handoffs and i think there it's probably good to have at least one or two throws and pickups in a show reel uh, it, it just it shows that you can play off your co-caster well, and I think it adds personality. I think the way we do our transitions and those kind of, be it a pause, be it a question, be the, the hype, uh, the emotion level, when you throw or when you pick up, I think these things are important. And one of the, that's one of the things I'll be looking to add when I revamp this, which I will be doing over the next week or two. Perhaps we do a, you know, a look inside some of the masters out there for next week. And then the following week, hopefully I'll have something to show and we can revisit this and maybe even do a side by side or I mean, just, just get your opinions on the updated reel, what I was trying to accomplish and and go from there. But so at, at this stage, you know, we're at two minutes on of the, the 222, which is still a hair long. I probably we'll cut this down to 215. That three to two. It's going to be all for us. Y'all look out for each other in game and out. We'll see you next time. Yes, like showing, yes. I, I think that's super important too, Ocean. Saying that showing you, you picking up after a color setup to illustrate that you can take a storyline that they've started or handed to you and then take that even further and keep plus it and keep building on that. I think that's a great idea. Uh, that's, that's very similar to what I was thinking as far as showing transitions. Uh, I think that's a wonderful idea. You said you have a question in Discord. Let me go check that out. Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, Contender South America is coming back Tuesday. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, the problem, you know, you, you want to maximize your time, though. So it's, you don't want to spend a whole lot of time. I know, yeah, here's my doggo. Um, you don't want to put a whole lot of time into showing somebody else cast. I mean, you have... Two minutes and 20 seconds to demonstrate everything that you're about as a caster. Every second you give that screen time to somebody else, it 
it's time that you can be showing off your own. It, it is very difficult. Like, it needs to be a phrase. Yes, it would need to hit the nail on the head, NSB. Two very key words. It would need to be done very well and would have to be very quick. So, I mean, it is, you know, pick up one phrase on the end of what your co-caster is feeding you. And then, I mean, just enough to illustrate that you can take a point that's been presented to you and elevate it even further and apply it to the play-by-play and what's happening in the here and now of the fight. And, I mean, and that can go either way. That, I think that could go for either color or play-by-play. I mean, I don't think it doesn't matter who you are in that scenario. The, the same applies to both. All right, well, that's enough of my crappy showreel. Let's actually take a look at a good showreel. Spot in the book of esports history for champions here in the Overwatch League. The stage finalists, of course, oh, yeah. buying all that honor and of course. They're knocking on the door, man, but it's not Ding Dong Dash. They right out of the gate. I like how he he just starts with him, and it's a full screen shot. Well, he starts with the logo, there is a special spot. but it's it's already him talking. Uh, it's him doing an intro where I mean it's kind of the, the pre match. History, the champions here in the Overwatch League has his name pop up, finals, of course, oh, yeah. buying all that honor, and then it goes into a bit of graphics and text. Very cool start. Also, look at the time. Two minutes and 20 seconds on the nose. They're knocking on the door, man, but it's not Ding Dong Dash. They're here to stay. To pay a step for that soul. Custer's low. The healing's down. Shaq's now the only one left here for the Los Angeles Valley. And no more. No chance. And a long fight to get it done. And they get the third map. It was just too much time. There were some cuts in there. To seem that together. ESL Arena here in Katowice for our 33rd and final game of this ESL 1 Cologne the offline qualifier. And he's showing off. This is essentially a hosting reel as well as a casting reel kind of combined into one. I mean, and again, I'm kind of on the opinion that you would do one or the either. One or the other. I can't talk to I told you all I'm tired. I apologize. one to come up and we'll talk a little bit more about it after the break this we gets over the hill but only just now rhino on the north side finds nuclear picks him up Apple <laughs> that, that, that's prior to overwatch what a finish to a perfect map to start this series off it's going to be sk getting out in the lead it's one to zero but there's many more rounds of CS to be played on the way to another major tournament title, but we've got a long way to go before we find that out. The next map, of course. So welcome back to the Blizz Arena. What a fantastic night it is with some good Yeah, I think that was the weakest clip of them all. And it ends very abruptly. But there's a lot of good stuff in there. I heard a ding. What was the ding? Shh. Ah, Disro hosted. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Billy.
The eyebrow flick? What was the eyebrow flick? You talking about from me or from Uber? Could have been either. <laughs> Uh, yeah, his shirt's awesome. But back to the point at hand. Sorry, I was catching up on chat here. Oh, yeah, this, it's the start of Uber's Real? Yeah. Here, let's let's watch it again. There is a special... Sp oh. I meant to pause, not mute. Let's, let's go back and watch it again. I love his use of text during it, too. And this is an example where he's showing multiple games. Uh, and it still works. Like, it's... I, I mean, I think he, it also depends on what you're going for, right? Like, he is just going out into the market. I mean, that's that's the way it appears, where he's looking for a job either as a host or as a caster and is providing as many games as humanly possible to show his flexibility. A and it works. Let's go look at it again. We'll break it down a little bit more this time. So starts on the logo, audio overlaid, in the book of e cuts right into this intro shot. Love, love the opening. History for champions here in the Overwatch League. Ah, that. <laughs> yep, he does. He does a little eyebrow raise for sure. All, I love all the text overlay. This is actually really nice. And what this does more than anything is it breaks up the casting clips so that it gives each clip its own little room to breathe and it does it really well and it's super important i mean again every second of the 140 here is extremely intentional and very good at building the overall story they're knocking on the door man but it's not ding dong dash they're here to stay KSF, but that's all. Custer's low. The healing's down. Shaq's now the only one left here for the Los Angeles Valley. But no more. No chance. So it cuts twice during that. Um, one that looks like a cut and isn't. That's the uh, observers. But from that same shot, it actually cuts, right? So I mean, that's there's nothing wrong with that. Let's, if we go back and break down this clip. They're knocking on the door, man, but it's not Ding Dong Dash. They're here to stay. Kays Cuts there. Except for that's all. Custer's low. The healing's down. Shaq's now the only one left here for the Los Angeles Valley. And then it cuts there. But no more. No chance. And a long fight to get it done. And they get the third map. It was just too much time. See, and there, he 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 does let Mr. X, like, come in with that, that last, what? It was too much time. Five words. And it showed it showed a throw. It showed a transition. The ESL arena here in Canavitsa. I mean, I'm, he also had help. <laughs> like Uber didn't put this together himself. I promise you, he had help. Well, I mean, his wife or what? His baby mama. I don't know if they're married, but Ashley is. I mean, she's a producer. She's you know he he's got he's got a lot of help around him. Um, for our 33rd. But I seriously doubt like he actually did the editing or did the the text and the way the, the graphics flow. The transitions are really clean. And I mean like just the the way the graphics go in and out. If you notice the like the way it zooms in and zooms out, they, it's just really clean. And that is not it's not easy to do to make it look seamless and clean like that. ESL Arena here in Canavitsa for our 33rd and final game of this ESL 1 Cologne offline qualifier. So it shows him doing some hosting. The then the break. I mean, that... Like, that's a clip where I mean he's awesome, but the audio quality kind of sucks. And we couldn't be happier. It's been an incredible stage thus far, but there's more to come. Our fans over on Twitch will be able to join us for the post. Audio still going. Like the audio put a little effect on the audio, but you can still hear him trailing off uh, as it comes back into here. But once again, separating the clips with these little bit of space to give him room to breathe. Mix 
was a big knockup towards Fnatic, but Reckless just blew him. Okay, it's strange hearing Uber cast Leak. Like, I don't know, he's just such a super hype caster. And to me, League is a little slow. Uh, I mean, it's just not something I've really gotten into. I mean, that's it, obviously a landmark game. And it's not to say that you can't be hot. I mean, some of the most famous esports casters of all time come from League of Legends. But to me, it's just funny hearing him cast League. Gets on. Wushin got knocked into enemy territory. And now they're trying to pressure towards Forbidden. But it's another curtain call here. And this might be the final one. MLXG trying to get back. Xiao who somehow escaped. But he's got to sit in the fountain. I mean, it's right Uber. He crushes. That a That's a weird flex. But... Of course, it's going to be cash. It's going to be interesting. Showing mass appeal. Up, and we'll talk a little bit more about it after the break. This we gets over the hill, but only just. Now Rhino on the north side finds Nuclear, picks him up. Apple what? What a finish to a perfect map to start this series. In the wind down. SK getting out in the lead. It's one to zero, but there's many more rounds of cs to be played on the way to another major See, tour even though title, he's showing almost a different game map, course, so back for every Arena. clip what a fantastic night it is for some good overwatch i'm it's leslie with matthew morello in this one the Cali i'm guessing it's actually a little longer but they just made a a twitter version because the end just is so abrupt Oh, yeah. As far as play by plays, sure. Uber was definitely one of the best casters, at least for this past year. Um, I mean, it's just hard to argue. Like, Uber's, he's just got a lot of charisma, and he's really good at controlling a lot of the technical aspects of a cast. He's very good with the, I mean, obviously his choice of words, where he's very entertaining with his choice of words, but it's more than that. The, the, like the way he comes back into a camera, the way he does his introductions, like there's a lot of technical aspects of Uber that we could delve into on a studying the Masters series and probably will. Um, you know what? You just gave me another idea. So we'll do Avril and Pixie for personality because holy shit, like you don't get more personality, I don't think, in a cast than those two. I mean, maybe Monty and Doa uh, would be another one that we could look at for personality. But to me, Avril and Pixie just have this wonderful playfulness to their personalities that just it comes across in spades like you're just they're just piling on the personality in such a high octane game like overwatch is nuts um but going back and looking at uber and his word choices and how he builds hype and i, I mean honestly we could also look at how he's evolved as well but you anyway, know good ideas for things to study in the future but to the point at hand uh, even with him showing clips from across multiple games, you'll notice he's showing multiple stages of a cast. He's not just showing his super hype moments, which is kind of what he's known for, right? Be because, Ocean, you're saying, why not watch a Watchpoint show to show personality? Because I want it to be during a broadcast. The whole point is for us as casters, how can we show that during a broadcast? When when you have a pre-show, the whole point is to kind of show personality. I mean, you're you're when you're in a desk segment, I think it's a lot easier to show personality and to have that room to play. I mean, World Cup desks, I mean, we're just had it uh, over and over again. I mean, down to with like sideshow drinking maple syrup and that kind of stuff, like but during a broadcast and a game as fast paced as Overwatch, it's not nearly as much room to show that. And Avril Pixie managed to, I don't think I put an and in there. They're just Avril Pixie. Uh, they, they managed to do it time and time again during a broadcast. So I, I think that's, that's why it's really important. Be happy to take a look at it. No, I mean, that's not to say that we can't have different examples of how to show personality. Um, Sure, bring it, bring it on, Ocean. I'd love to see the clip, and you know, it certainly could be something that we can use. But I mean, I, I think I kind of finished my point of what I was talking about. But I wanted to reiterate: no matter the game clip, Uber is showing different sides of him of his broadcast personality. He, he's showing different stages of where he's at in a cast, and the the build up, you know, the the arc, the the 
the height of it all, super hype moment of it all, a, a little bit, you know, the, the kind of come down afterwards when he's talking about the Titans and the victory and how important that is. The, and, and even through, you know, the, the CSGO clips and even the World of Tank clips, that World of Tanks clip. I really can't talk tonight. I apologize, friends. Um, words are hard. I'm having a mental breakdown, apparently. But uh, it's important to show different levels of emotion in your demo reel. And, and I think Uber does a really good job of it. During Watchpoint Season 1, a preview showing highlight show highlighting a preview show highlighting transfers okay and i assume you're talking about like transfers between owl teams like players are being transferred i'm not quite sure exactly what you mean by transfers but that's that's the only thing that makes sense in my head yeah Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. So, yeah, unless there was... Oh, yeah, I want to see if I can find Kenobi's. Oh, let's see if I can find Kenobi's real, real quick. Oh, I'd love to take a look at another example. Let's see if his is on his Twitter. Yes, it is. I remember seeing this. Sweet. Let's watch this. Sweet. Kenobi is a color caster for contenders. Uh, absolutely brilliant, dude. Uh, I had the honor and pleasure of casting with him once, and it was a wonderful experience. He's so good. He's so good. Uh, I, he was definitely a little out of my league, but it was for it made for a fun cast. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch that browser. Our first game is going to be T1W versus Flag Gaming. And then after that, we're going to have another great game in Team CC versus Billy Billy Gaming. Supercharger from over basically secures them a win. Now BLG, they have some ultimates to work with. They're going to have the blade from Winter. But the rally is coming out from Mizuki early. I like this. It's going to negate some of the damage. Four minutes. They have to hold this. I don't think it's possible for 1987 to hit any more sleep darts than he's hitting. I mean, every single time yeah. someone is diving onto him, someone is diving onto one of his teammates. Like we saw there, over dives in with Nano, slept immediately. Don't say he's diving into the back line, slept immediately. Gravitic Flux into Gravitic Flux seems to be a pretty decent combo, who would have thought? And I think that's really what I'm looking out for today. Spectra specifically, is he going to be able to fill the gap that Team CC has in a lack of an Echo player? This map is just over, Lobosco. This this round is over. This attack is over from Light Gaming. They can't do anything. They have no ultimates to work with whatsoever. There's a Gravitic Flux from Sia that can basically end this fight as soon as the dive comes in. This is all Team CC's to lose. I'm pretty sure the pause there is because the players are out of breath. Because that, that last fight felt like it lasted forever. And I wasn't yeah. even playing in it. That, they were playing <laughs> in that. The true essence of Chinese contenders was right there, Rich. Rotate here after that Sage Wall, and after you saw two people were on that B site, you probably just rotate this all the way over to A. You are facing off against an AWP, but it is flashed. Oh, what? Oh, come on! <laughs> well, it's not gonna escape the sight lines of Fox. Oh, oh Wow! Holy moly, Fi, they have families. You can't do them like that. How could you? Hang on by a thread here at the end. Hip, 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 but they could theoretically continue to snowball this especially if fish one two three loses this next round so if you look oh, here this very it. complicated equation oh my um, gosh p1w plus iv uh plus moliner and dps equals good any final thoughts kenobi uh keep watching chinese contenders support tier two obviously wherever mm -hmm. you are whoever you are don't touch the browser also don't close the browser right keep it here don't go anywhere That's a really good reel. Yeah, that's that's a really good reel. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the repeated team CC clips, yes. Yeah, that's really that's really solid. 
I was kind of thinking that too. Um, here, let's go back and take a look. Let me get it reset here. And we'll kind of break this one down a little bit and we'll call it a day. I appreciate y'all hanging out. I don't want to keep you for too long. Um, once again, showing different levels of emotion. I mean, we're, we're seeing a trend here. Also, look at the time. Two minutes and 20 seconds on the dot. Hey, why is my space bar working? Play. Play, you rat bastard. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch that browser. Our first game is going to be T1W versus Flag Gaming. And then after that, we're going to have another great game in Team CC versus Billy Billy Gaming. Supercharger from over, basically secure. So right out of the win. gate, it's pre-match. It doesn't even really, I mean, he kind of introduces himself in the very first don't go anywhere. Don't touch that browser. Our first game is going to be T1W. I mean, he doesn't introduce Black himself. Gaming. He just relies that, on his name being up there. Great game in Team CC versus Billy Billy Gaming. Supercharger from over basically secures them a win. Now BLG, they have some ultimates to work with. They I did flip over, didn't I? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I like that y'all are here. It, it's It's awesome. We're all growing together. Seriously, thank y'all for hanging out. We're gonna have the blade from Winter, but the rally's coming out from Mizuki early. I like this, it's gonna negate some of the damage. Four minutes. Uh, that was a good clip. He, he's interjecting his own opinions on that one. They have to hold this. I and okay, uh, doing a color reel is gonna be a little different because the emotion spikes aren't gonna be as high. Well, traditionally, as a play-by-play. -play. I don't think it's possible for 1987 to hit any more sleep darts. Than is this the clip you don't like? I think this is a great clip. I think this shows some good personality and humor. Him, someone is diving onto one of his teammates. Like we saw there, over dives in with Nano, slept immediately. Don't say he's diving into the back line, slept immediately. Gravitic Flux into Gravitic Flux seems to be a pretty decent... See, and to me, humor isn't like you made a stupid pun. Like it's got a touch of humor where you you kind of laugh like yep slept immediately like I don't know that makes me that make, kind of makes me giggle inside you know uh, that's why I say it has a little bit of humor but it definitely shows some personality. Combo, who would have thought? And I. Let's see, let's see. I'm sure you're gonna have. All right, all right. I had a feeling you were gonna comment on that. All right, let's let's bring it back to the Kings Row clip. Teammates, fine. Yeah. I mean, any more sleep possible for 1987 to hit any more sleep darts than he's hitting i mean every single time yeah. someone is diving onto him someone is diving onto one of his teammates like we saw there over dives in with nano slept immediately don't say he's diving into the back line slept immediately gravitic all right let's discuss that clip what didn't you like about that clip I i've already given you my thoughts on it I, I thought it showed good personality and yeah it's a good job of zooming in before he talks about the sleep darts, I thought that was the entirety of the clip. Did I not back it up far enough? Gave some of the damage. Four minutes. They have to hold this. I don't think it's possible for 1987 to hit any. You talking about that? Like he should have just cut in where I cut in before, right? That's that's actually valid. That's actually very valid. That could have just been a length thing. Uh, I, I assume that, I assume that's what you're talking about where he says four minutes that's how long they have to hold this and then he then he immediately jumps into talking about the sleep darts because it doesn't he doesn't really transition between the two thoughts he just immediately jumps in to zooming into talking about 1987 support if there was I mean I could I could see that or, I mean, that's my thoughts on it, at least, is maybe just have started the clip r right where I initially started the clip. Because the rest of it is solid. So it's, yeah, probably sh just should not have included that into the show reel. Yep, I agree completely. Than he's hitting. I mean, every single time yeah. someone is diving onto him, someone is diving onto one of his teammates, like we saw there, over dives in with Nano, slept immediately. Don't say he's diving into the back line, slept immediately. Gravitic Flux into Gravitic Flux seems to be a pretty decent combo, who would have thought? 
And I think that's really what I'm looking out for today. Spectra specifically, is he going to be able to fill the gap that Team CC has in a lack of an Echo player? This map is just over, Lobosco. This this round is over. This attack is over from light gaming. They can't that was an interesting one, too, because, I mean, unless you really know Overwatch, you don't know that he's talking about an Echo until the very end. Can't do anything. They have no ultimates to work with whatsoever. There's a Gravitic Flux from Sia that can basically end this fight as soon as the dive comes in. This is all Team CC's to lose. I'm pretty sure the pause there is because the players are out of breath because that that last fight felt like it lasted forever, and I wasn't yeah. even playing in it. That, they were playing in that. The true essence of Chinese contenders was right there, Rich. Rotate here after that Sage wall, and after you saw two people were on that. See, and he kind of does a, like, goes in, shows some height, then brings it back down, and and does, and then brings it back to a camera shot, where it's got a, a little bit of humor injected, and he's even talking about a pause, but in the showreel itself, he's kind of taking a pause to let you catch your breath, and then goes back into more in-game action. It's a, a really cool a really cool idea and that's something i may implement as a matter of fact at b site you probably just rotate this all the way over to Where? a you are facing okay. off against Let me pause. Bob, but it is Sorry. flashed oh what oh come on that's just showing a hype reaction moment he does it here too showing a hype reaction moment um which uh i was watching leg day's review of gauntlet and he made a really cool point for color casters out there um, keep your, if you're going to interject while your play-by-play -play is talking, keep it to three syllables, maybe three words, but really three syllables, because any more than that, and it gets lost and you, you not only risk detracting from what your play-by-play -play is actually saying, as opposed to building hype and adding hype to the moment, which is what those, those little three word interjections are supposed to do, uh, any more than three syllables and your own it, like you start talking over each other and, and shit just gets muddled so i, I thought it was a cool point that leg day made earlier today so i just wanted to pass that on uh but that's what he's showing here well it's <laughs> not gonna escape the sight lines of oh, oh! And the right and, and this is this kind of it's the reverse of what you were talking about ocean so instead of a play-by-play -play going off of uh a throw from the color to build that story he's showing as a color how he can build on the hype that the play-by-play -play is bringing and a really good illustration of it too wow holy moly Pi, they have families you can't do them like that how could so he, he doesn't go right back into analytics uh not to do not to get into casting analytics here but you know it's what we do right um he doesn't immediately jump to analytics. He's still stuck on the hype of that moment. And that's what that clip is showing really nice. Hang on by a thread here at the end, hip, 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 but they could theoretically continue to snowball this, especially- Now he goes into some analytics with this one. one, two, three, loses this next round. So if you look oh, here- it's very And some stakes. A good combination of analytics and stakes in that last one. Here, we just have a little bit of humor to close it out oh with. Gosh. Back to cams. Plus Ivy. Uh, plus, Moliner and DPS equals good. Any final thoughts, Kenobi? Uh, keep watching Chinese Contenders. Support Tier 2, obviously. Wherever mm -hmm. you are, whoever you are. Don't touch the browser also. Don't close the browser. Right. Keep it here. Don't go anywhere. So, a nice closing. I think, ideally, uh, he would have been on the same side. I mean, this is nitpicky. But... Uh, the, this shows good humor. I actually don't like the fact that he covers his face in this because showing who we are is really important for a show reel. Um, I, I mean, and he has some good humor stuff. I honestly am not a big fan of this clip just for the fact that he's covering up his face. Uh, and then when it cuts to this, he's on the other side. And that's just... It just feels weird. Like, your eye is already looking on the right-hand side of the screen, and then suddenly Kenobi's on the left-hand side of the screen. And, and yes, it is nitpicky, but that's just kind of a design flow thing. So if I had critiques, those would be my critiques. Overall, uh, I, I mean, watching. clearly a much better demo reel than what I showed y'all, right? And there's definitely ways that we could take some of the things that we're seeing in Kenobi's reel and implement them into our own to improve our own demos. Chinese contenders, support Tier 2, obviously. Wherever you are, whoever you are, don't touch the browser also. Don't close the browser. Right. Keep it here. Don't go anywhere. I, I could, I mean, obviously it's a good way to finish. It's a, it's a really cool close. I could see why he put that clip in as his closing clip. And the graphics and everything looking nice. Has his headshot up. This is what he uses for his headshot. 
So it's the full picture. It's the full high res picture of what he uses for his headshot, which keeps a consistency. Um, this can be very important too, because you know you'll often include a headshot when you send out show reels. So the same shot that the TO or employer will be seeing as far as this is this person's headshot. Then when he sees the reel, they see that same shot. They see that same pose. It's just easy to connect the dots and put together who Kenobi is as a caster. So it, even his final frame here is actually very clever that he's using this picture for his final frame with room to put his info over here. This photo was very clearly taken to allow negative space, a lot of negative space. He's on the third, on the right-hand side, right on the third. His eyes are right on the third, just good composition stuff going on there. And then leaving the left two-thirds of the screen open for text. Very nicely done. Uh, any more, you got any questions out there? Any more thoughts? Let's see. Let me get caught up on chat here while I was looking at that. Four syllables can, I mean, yes, there are exceptions in SB to the three syllable rule, but just keep it in mind. Just, I mean, once you know the rule, then you know when you can break it because it depends on the timing of your play by play. Like I, the timing is so important as well because you don't want to be talking over a crucial point or do anything that takes away from your play. Like that's your play. I play's job is to build that moment. And in doing those little interjections, obviously the point is to help elevate that. Uh, Wolf does it amazingly, but yeah, you're, the timing has to be just right, but just know if you know the three syllable rule, then you know when you've got a little flex on when you can break it, expand on it. But uh, I mean, like they gave examples earlier, like he gave like a five word one and you could only hear three of the five words that he said. The other two got totally muddled into the two casters talking over each other when he was casting with Jaws for Gauntlet. Uh, let's see. What else? Let me get caught up on the rest of the chat. Three words max, four to five syllables max. Yeah, I, I like the three syllables, honestly. Uh, of course, Ocean, you're like just filling up my chat here. I like it. I like it. Let's see. That's part of the King's Row clip. Yeah, I, I, I would agree that Kenobi is probably the third best color caster that's not now behind Avril and leg day. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Uh, da, 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 da. Don't worry, Ocean, I can't spell either. Spelling is not a sign of intelligence. It's a sign of memorization. Uh, da, 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 da. Color on the left. <laughs> yes. Yes, I, I agree with that. Apparently, I mean, in reference to the cameras being flipped, when we did the ace tournament, they were flipped as well. So uh, I still go back to, I think it's part of in APAC and uh, other Pacific regions. It's the, the reading right to left thing. Yes. Uh, you go on to say broadcast is directed towards APAC fans. Well, I mean, they're they're doing Chinese contenders, right? So that's what that clip was from. Although even in the same Chinese contenders, like one of them, they had it, the play by play on the left, the other, they had play by play on the right. For the conclusion, uh, I'm not sure what clip you're referring to there in SP. I thought his final clip was really good. The, but the, if the one where he's holding the sign in front of his face, uh, I would agree with that. Chopper, chopper. No, agreed. And we're doing the English broadcasts for APAC uh, for Chinese contenders, right? So, no, I agree. Uh, I mean, I think it should be play by play on left and color on right consistently. I I'd have to agree with that thought as well. Because we are, we're showing Chinese contenders to the Western audience, essentially. All right. 
Man, I love doing these. I can't. It, it been live for nearly an hour and a half. It does not feel like it at all. <laughs> so you know, the whole time flies thing. Uh, Billy, I feel that way too. Wait, we're not behind. We just have we just have more road to travel on our paths. That is all there is to it. No more, no less. Like like your little Discord statement, you know. We've we've traveled a long way. You can't take that away from us. Doesn't mean there's not more to go, and doesn't mean there's not more to learn. I mean, I, as good as Uber is, and as good as his reel was, I don't think it was perfect. It was really damn good. Uh, I aspire to get my reel up to that level, not to mention my casting. Speaking of Uber, let's see if he has started. Yes, he has. All right. Speaking of Uber. So Uber is, yeah, sorry about that. That was a bit of an echo. I pulled up my Twitch so I could host and just played myself in the background. That was weird. Uh, but yes, he's doing a VOD review of himself casting the grand finals. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out and let's go watch that. And I mean, he probably won't give a shit about my little raid, but I'm going to go ahead and raid him anyway. Thank y'all for hanging out for Caster Class, and I will see y'all next Monday. Oh, it won't let me raid his channel. Well, go watch Uber. I, I mean, I, I'll see y'all in there. He's got his raids turned off, apparently, but that's okay. Let's go. Let's go. Keep learning. And yeah, never stop improving.